Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at the trigonometric angle addition rules. So we can answer questions from exercise 7a. So what we're going to be doing in this video here is deriving formulas that will expand sine a plus b for us or sine alpha plus beta. Same with cos cos a plus b and tan a plus b. Now it's not just as simple as doing sine a plus sine b. Uh, we, be nice if that was it was that easy but unfortunately it's not. We're going to come up with these formulas using this diagram here and as you can see it's carefully constructed with a whole bunch of right angled triangles in there um, nicely so that the length from A to E is 1 on them so we're not going to have any scale factor multipliers at most points. The key triangle that we're going to look at here is the opposite side of this triangle here why this triangle here, why is this the key one? It's because it's got an angle at the bottom left of alpha plus beta. So we're looking for this side here, uh, on the right hand side here, that's the opposite side, so whatever that is, um, that's going to be our rule for uh, sine alpha plus beta. And whatever length is on the bottom here, that's going to be our rule for cos alpha plus beta. Notice here how the hypotenuse is 1, therefore I don't need to times this, the opposite side by anything, and I don't really need to times the, um, the cos side by anything either. But first of all, we don't know um, any angles in this top right hand triangle here, so let's go ahead and derive some. So we can spot some um, z angles here, that's a z angle there, so alpha in there. The angle at C inside the triangle CEF is 90 minus alpha. And then we have a um, angular FEC at alpha up here because that's what we'll get left over inside a right angle triangle. So this is now going to be the diagram that we're going to be working with. We're just going to label a whole bunch of sides first using sines and coses um, and then we'll come up with these formulas. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to label the opposite side on this triangle here. We've got a hypotenuse of 1, so the opposite side here is just going to be sine alpha, sine beta. The next side we're going to label is um, the uh, side uh, from E to F. So we've now got a hypotenuse of sine beta, so that's going to have to come into play. And we're looking for the adjacent side on this alpha angle, so that's cos alpha. So in this case here, this length from E to F here is going to be cos alpha times sine beta. The next side that we're going to label is um, the smaller at side inside this one here, so from F to C. This is going to be the opposite side of the sine alpha where we have a hypotenuse of sine beta so in that case there it's going to be sine alpha times sine beta is that side here. The next side that we're going to label is um, is the tr one inside this triangle here. We've got one along the hypotenuse here we've got uh, that doesn't, doesn't really matter so then we've got uh, the we're looking for the adjacent side on this right angle triangle here with the angle of beta. So the length of this side here from A to C is cos beta. The next side of the triangle that we're going to label is the opposite side CB here. So we have a hypotenuse of cos beta. We're looking for the opposite side when we have an angle of alpha. So it's going to be sine alpha times cos beta sine alpha cos beta and the one that stretches out from A to B along the bottom here that's going to be the adjacent side where the angle is alpha with a hypotenuse of cos beta so in this case here that bottom one is going to be cos alpha cos beta okay now that we've got a carefully labeled diagram we can derive our rules so oh, uh, so now we're going to look at this triangle here AED and we're going to look at the opposite side along this triangle here. Well, what we can see here is this would obviously be <coughs> the sine um, side of alpha plus beta, hypotenuse of 1, so that doesn't matter. So this will be sine alpha plus beta, this whole side here, from these angles alpha plus beta inside there. So it's going to be sine alpha plus beta, but we've also got two lengths that can add up to make the whole length of this sine from D to E. 
So in this case here, we also know that this is equal to sine alpha beta, sine alpha cos beta, this side here, plus cos alpha sine beta. So therefore, what we get is a rule where the um, sine of alpha plus beta, we're comparing this side from D to E down here, sine alpha plus beta is equal to sine alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sine beta. So you can see here, both of them will have a sine and a cos, and then the angles will swap around from one of the expressions from the first one to the second one. So sine alpha cos beta plus cos alpha sine beta. And that is a rule that will be in the formula booklet, and it's going to be a really important rule that we're going to use in the future. Um, so store that one away as a really important formula. The next one we're going to do is the one for cos, so cos alpha plus beta. If we take triangle ADE, then the cos side on alpha plus beta is, on the angle alpha plus beta, is this length from A to D here. Now what we do know is the length from A to B, and we know that we can then subtract this smaller angle that's up here. So in this case here, we get the rule that cos alpha plus beta is equal to this whole length from here to here, cos alpha cos beta, take away this shorter side from here to here to leave us just with this side here, um, which is cos alpha cos beta minus sine alpha sine beta. And this again is a really important rule for later on um, when we come to doing lots of solving tree equations. So store that one away as a really important formula. What we're now going to do is we're going to have a look at the subtraction rule formulas. So having a look at cos A minus B now. And what we're going to set this time is we're going to replace um, alpha and beta with A and B. And now we're going to replace B with minus B, just in this rule here. So now we've got sine of minus B. Now if you can remember one of the relationships with sine uh, minus B is that um, sine of um, minus 40, for example, there's a bit of minus symbol in there, sine of minus uh, 40 is equal to minus sine 40, so we can pull that negative out to the front. And with the cos one, the cos one is perfectly symmetric, so it doesn't really matter uh, whether you've got a negative in there or not, so you can just ignore the negative. And with the negative symbol on the sign, you can pull it out to the front, and we get this expression here. Cos alpha, so cos A minus B is equal to cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. So notice here how with the cos ones, you get a different sign um, each time. So if you've got plusing your angles together, it's a minus in the formula, and if you've got a negative, of, if you're subtracting your angles one from the other, it's an addition in the rule. Okay. And exactly the same thing applies for sine uh, alpha minus beta. It's going to be sine alpha cos beta minus cos alpha sine beta. What we're going to do now is have a look at proving the one for tan. And we're going to do this by thinking about sine a plus b over cos a plus b. So expanding your brackets and doing some uh, dividing all the terms by cos a cos b. So that's this term by cos a plus b, divide this cos divide this term by cos a plus b, divide this term by cos a plus b, divide this term by cos a plus b. You're effectively doing the same thing to the top and the bottom here. And when you simplify, what you'll see happen is we will get tan a plus tan b over 1 minus tan a tan b. So this here is the rule for um, tan uh, a plus b. And very similar for the negative one, if you've got a negative symbol here, then there's going to be a negative symbol here and a positive symbol down here. Okay, so those are all the rules, and you'll get all of these formulas, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, in the formula booklet, so you need to know how to use them. Let's go ahead and see a, a, an example where we're using these. So I reckon here we start with the more difficult side, which is the left-hand side. Maybe I'd start with the right-hand side, but I think we're fine to start with the left-hand side. 
Multiply each of your denominators by each other to make them equal. <clears throat> and now all of a sudden we've got the same thing on the denominator as the right hand side. So that's good. We can uh, carry on from here. Uh, subtract the numerators one from each other. We get cos b cos a minus sine a sine b. And recalling that this is the formula for um, cos alpha plus beta, we can write this now as cos a plus b, and we've proved a trig identity. So we can use these double angle rules or, or multiple angle rules for proving trig identities. We can also do it for writing some expression in terms of another expression. So in this case here, it wants us to show tan x in terms of tan y. So first of all, probably be a good idea to expand these brackets using the correct formulas that we have above here. So in this case here, it's going to be 2 sine x cos y plus cos x sine y. That's the rule to expand sine x plus y. Equals 3 cos x cos y plus sine x sine y. That's the rule to expand cos x minus y. Multiply out all your brackets. Divide by cos x cos y to make a bunch of tans. And then simplify, so we've got a, um, a whole bunch of sines over coses that can turn into tans and a whole coses over coses that can just cancel each other out. So let's go ahead and do that. So we get here 2 tan x plus 2 tan y equals 3 plus 3 tan x tan y. Now we've got to make tan x in terms of tan y, so we need to group all the tan x's together on one side. And then factorise a tan x out. And then divide through by the bracket, and we get tan x equals 3 minus 2 tan y over 2 minus 3 tan y. Alright then, your turn to have a go at these two questions here then. Pause the video and try these two out. Okay, so question four here is a student makes a mistake of thinking that sine a plus b can just be simplified as sine a plus sine b. Choose non-zero values of a and b to show that this identity is not true. So let's just say that a here is 10, b is 20, and we'll just show that this is not the case. So sine 10 plus 20, well, hold on, that's an easy one, that's 0.5. <clears throat> sine 10, I'll just grab my calculator, sine 10 is equal to 0.17, sine 20 is equal to 0.34, add these two together, add sine 10, making sure I use all the, so that's 0 0.515, oh it's pretty close to be fair, but it's not equal, so not equal, so hence this rule is not allowed, this is not a rule, you have to use the proper one from the formula booklet. <clears throat> so question 7 here is write sine x plus pi by 6 in the form p sine x plus q sine x plus q cos x, where p and q are constants to be found. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the rule that sine a plus b is equal to sine a cos b plus uh, cos a sine b. And we're going to set a equal to x and b equal to pi by 6. <clears throat> so in this case here it's going to be sine x plus pi by 6 is equal to sine x cos pi by 6, that's 30 degrees, plus cos x sine pi by 6. And now we can calculate these two values here and here. So cos pi by 6, that's root 3 over 2. So it's the root 3 over 2 sine x. So this here is effectively the value p. And on the last one here, sine pi by 6, that's a half times cos x. And this here effectively is the value for q. 
So there we are, that's uh, the questions that we're going to have a go at here then. Have a go at plenty more questions on exercise 7a. Have a go at the exam type questions and the problem solving style questions with the E and the P next to them. Persevere through the difficult ones, ask your teacher for help if you need any, and thanks very much for watching.